This is the Sony AX53. Am I actually gonna use a camcorder in the 2020s? Is that pure insanity? Or is it genius? Or is it both? So is it genius or is it crazy? By the time you finish watching this video, you're gonna have the answer, but you have to watch the whole video because there's going to be a lot covered here. We're gonna dig deep into the camera, go into the menus, explain the controls, the buttons, the switches, how to customize the camera, go into some basic functions and get more advanced as well. Video examples, stabilization, low light. I'll show you about the app, some hidden tips, tricks, suggestions. Wow, there is a lot to cover. But let's start with the elephant in the room and that is a camcorder, really? I mean, do you really wanna be that guy that everybody is secretly laughing at, bumbling and fumbling with this camcorder? You won't have to worry about feeling nerdy with this handsome camcorder. If your main purpose is shooting videos and not photos, you'll find how comfortable it is in the hand, not to mention all the advantages a camcorder has, like no 30 minute recording limit. Since the battery is not internal, you can use one of these large batteries and get endless recording and you don't have to worry about overheating. Nope, not with a camcorder. This model comes with a rare flip up viewfinder to get creative and a variable speed zoom to go from wide to tight in a nice smooth motion. And you can still take photos in a pinch and I'll tell you, they don't look half bad. We'll get more into that soon. Macro photography is another advantage without having to switch any lenses with this camcorder. If you want to use an external mic, you can. And the camcorder also has world-class stabilization. Look at this, at 30 times zoom, it's almost like on a tripod. And look, this guy is no dummy. He's using a vintage camera too. Well, the AX53 may not be quite as vintage as that having been released in 2016, but let's see how it compares to a mirrorless camera around that time, the a7 III, and comparing them side by side, you could see how close it is. Just because this camcorder isn't such a modern piece of tech doesn't mean it can't capture beautiful imagery. Look at these nice sun stars and various shots around the city, really capturing great detail. Look, no monkeying around here. Look at the individual strands of fur and it catches the nice colors in the autumn leaves in 4K up to 30 frames per second or HD up to 60. So if camcorders really can do a good job, why did they die out? Well, since almost everyone has a camera now in their cell phones and with the rise of the higher end mirrorless market, sort of squeezed out the lower end camcorder market. But the AX53 with its Zeiss lens with a wide angle equivalent of 26.8 millimeters and up to 30 times clear image zoom in 4K and 40 times in HD. The pixels are 1.6 times larger in Sony's Exmor CMO sensor for better low light performance. The multi-layer Zeiss T-coating further enhances image quality by reducing unwanted reflections such as ghost and flare. And look at the detail it produces. Why, you can see individual snowflakes in a snow squall in New York City. Shooting in 4K gives you the ability to crop into your image later in post-production and still maintain a great looking end product. Sony even managed to throw in a surround sound mic as well. And with all these features, the camera still doesn't have a lot of buttons and controls, is very sleek and attractive looking on all sides, not too busy, not too cluttered. So uncluttered as a matter of fact that you have to find certain ports. Like it's easy to find the mic port, but the headphone port is sort of hidden away in a different location, as is the hot shoe. Some people don't think there's a hot shoe, but there is hidden under a little top flap a little door, just make sure you don't break it. It seems kind of delicate. Some thoughtful touches with this camera. When you flip open the LCD, it automatically starts the camera the same way as you pull back the viewfinder. But that LCD screen is really tough to see in the sunlight, lots of reflection. But that's why you have a viewfinder. 0.24 inch, 1.5 million dot OLED. Can't find your DSR lens cap? 
<laughs> well, you'll never have that problem with the AX53. You'll notice the 20 times optical zoom written right on the lens and on the side, 30 times clear image zoom. So the problem is you don't know when you go from optical to clear image because it's not designated in the display. Clear image zoom is supposed to give you less degradation than digital zoom. You should hardly be able to see the difference. Well, let's see. About two thirds of the way, it's gonna be in clear image zoom. And let's see if you can see when it kicks in. It should be kicking in right about now. Do you see any degradation in the image? Does it still look sharp? Does it still look good? Sony's algorithm for clear image zoom is really effective because unless you're pixel peeping, wow, it really still looks sharp, clear, and effective. And that 30 times zoom makes this like a super zoom bridge type camera in a camcorder. Now this zoom would be of no value if the footage wasn't steady and Sony got it right with a gimbal inside the lens. They call it the balanced steady shot system. And as you move the camera, you can even see the mechanism swimming around, sort of being very floaty. And when you have the camera on and you move it, you can hear it move a little bit too. I, I thought there was maybe something wrong with my camera, but it's perfectly normal. Now the best strongest stabilization is the intelligent active, but that's not available in 4K. So let's take a look at each of these modes. In 4K, the best stabilization is active. And here it is while I am walking at a regular clip. So you can get an idea of how steady the camera becomes. And here I am running a little bit like an idiot, but just again, just to give you an idea of the active stabilization in 4K, and this is the strongest stabilization in 4K. Switching to 1080p lets us use Intelligent Active, which is a stronger five axis stabilization, and I am running here so you can get an idea. Okay, I am vlogging in 4K. I am vlogging in 4K, just so you get an idea of what we look like here. Not sure why I'm walking backwards, but I am vlogging in 4K right now. This is vlogging in 4K, so you can see the you can see the idea of the wide angle. So when you use stabilization, it crops the image. So here is 4K, for example, without any stabilization. Sorry for the shaky image, but that's what you get with any stabilization. And here is the same image with active. You see how much smoother it is, but it also brings it in considerably tighter. And here is intelligent active in HD, where it's even a tighter crop. Compare that without any stabilization. And the advantage of this is you can really get even closer to your subject. I hope you're getting something out of this video. If so, please just take a second and hit that like button. It really does help the channel and subscribe as well. More videos on camcorders, super zoom cameras, old tech and new tech, all coming together in tech to remember. Right now, a tip I'm gonna tell you about is how to take photos while recording video and how you can do this and what the limitations are. So the first thing we want to do in the menu is to make sure our photo size is correct. And I would recommend the larger 8.3 megabyte size. While you're recording video, all you have to do is just press the top shutter button, the photo button, and wait a minute, recording of still images impossible. Anything is possible. That's right. It's only possible in HD. We cannot do that in 4K. So set the camera to HD mode and then record your video and then you press the top shutter button and then cannot record still pictures when steady shot is set to intelligent active. Hmm. Okay, so we must change the steady shot to active mode or you can have it standard or off, but active is better. And then while you're recording, you can see that pressing the photo button does record a photo. It takes a while to write to the SD card, quite a few seconds. So don't expect any type of burst recording. You can also use the camera just to take photos on its own and that button on top will switch you from video to photo mode and back and forth. Or in the menu, you can just designate photo so it's set to photos. And here are some unprocessed JPEGs. So Sony incorporated some nice touch features on this camera. 
You can actually touch the screen to do zooming as opposed to using the top zoom button. Not sure why you'd want to do that, but you could. The menu itself is a touch menu, and you can actually use touch to focus. So all you have to do is just press on a certain part of the screen, and the camera will focus on the area you press. Sometimes I notice you have to press a little bit more than once. It just misses it. But for the most part, it works fairly well. This is not one of those cameras with a lot of different focus options. You basically have auto and manual. And the auto, while it's an improvement over prior models, sometimes it does get confused and hunts, like in this situation here with the sunset. Oftentimes too, while you are zooming, it may get confused, but other times it works great. Like in this scene here where you think it might miss, it captures the moon in sharp focus. But in this situation, it got confused. It was actually focused on the branch at the top of the screen, and it took a few seconds to figure out, hey, I want to shoot the flag and it got it. But again, other times like here, the focus is great, captures the detail of this pink bird, quite sharp, looks excellent and stays locked on. It's hit or miss. In this particular scene, it was a little bit of a miss as it was hunting on this parrot. If you find you're having issues in certain situations, you can always use manual focus. Now let's talk about some creative shooting modes and one of them is time-lapse. That's always a favorite. The AX53 does take individual pictures in a time-lapse setting. However, it does not stitch them together in camera. You will get a whole bunch of pictures that you'll have to use in your editing program. So be prepared for that. The AX53 has a setting called Smooth Slow Record, and that's for slow motion. You have to be in AVCHD though, which is the lower quality HD format. Now you can only shoot slow-mo for a few seconds. There's no audio and the result, well, it really is kind of low quality. The motion is smooth, but the image is very noisy and really not pleasing, very low resolution. An alternative and better way to get slow-mo is to go into the high speed record mode. Now that will set the camera to shoot 120 frames per second. And in that mode, in 1080p, you put that into your editing program, slow it down, and you will get a much higher slow motion result. It's higher quality HD, it has no record limit, it looks much better, compare it to this, which is really low resolution and terrible. Definitely, I would advise you to stay away from that super slow record mode. The high speed record is the way to go. By the way, on the touch panel for the LCD, when you touch the screen for a couple of seconds, you will get some information pop up and then it disappears. If you want to see it again, let's touch it again and that additional info will pop right up. Now, digging further into the menus, camera mic is where you have most of the controls and there are quite a bit of manual settings that you can adjust from exposure to focus to iris to shutter speed. Being that this camera has a small sensor, quite often it's important to override your exposure and your iris if your scene becomes too blown out. So it's important to know about these functions. One particular manual control, which is very useful, is the AGC limit. And this tells the camera how much grain is the maximum it can go. This way your low light scenes will not get that grainy. They'll be a little darker, but you won't have that noise in your image. Now the manual button on the camera is very important because you could assign a specific function to that button so you don't have to dig into menus every time you want to change that particular function. I set mine to exposure since I changed that the most, but you can set yours to whatever parameter you want from zoom, focus, AE shift, white balance shift, and then simply turning the front ring will change the value of whatever you set. Now a throwback feature to camcorders of old is the night shot function. Make sure you have the night shot light on in the menu I will go into a completely dark closet to show you how this infrared light actually lights up a scene in an eerie green setting. And you'll notice that the eyes will look a little scary. This is definitely ghost hunter material. But if you're into ghosts, if you're into dark closets, think about the AX53. There's no such thing as a ghost. Be that as it may, there are quite a number of options for low light shooting with this camera. In the low lux setting in the menu, it will make a low light seam look brighter, but at the expense of jittery motion. So I just prefer to leave that off. 
Now, while visiting the Central Park Zoo, this was a very low lit scene in the aquarium. I really wasn't getting much of an image. Compare this to what my iPhone was able to shoot. Well, the AX53 really fell short in this scene, but shooting the moon against a velvety black sky, it looks great. And this is hand holding. Now the AX53 offers a bunch of scene modes and you've seen these in other cameras. Basically, if you're shooting in a night scene or in a sunset scene, it will change some of the color parameters to try to maximize how that scene looks. Use them sparingly, but it's good to know that they are there. But a more professional feature is the Cinematone option, which this camera has. And if you wanna do color grading, this might be for you. Here's Cinematone off, and this is Cinematone on. I did not do any grading here. This is just for you to get an idea of how it changes the color curve of the image. Again, Cinematone on, and here is Cinematone off. So yes, the camera does have a few semi-professional features tucked away, like the ability to adjust your audio record level, which is perfect if you're using an external microphone. Another neat feature which not many people know about is this dual video record. Now, what is that exactly? You have to set that to on in the menu. And then whatever you shoot, it will take two files, one high quality and one lower MP4. So the high quality file is in the private MP4 root clip folder. It's a much bigger file size. And in this case, I shot it in 4K. But another file is stored in this folder here. You can see it's 2.5 megs and it's a much lower MP4 that you can email or send much easier over the internet. That's kind of a cool, useful feature. And what's not so useful are these picture effects like toy camera and pop color, kind of Instagram-y, hokey effects. But again, they are there if you need them. And to watch your footage back, just go into the playback function in the menu screen, and it sorts all the footage by date. Now, I'm not much of a fan of the remote control apps, but I'll just show you briefly. You have to go into the wireless section in the menu, hit control with smartphone, Wi-Fi standby will come up, and you notice it'll say play memories mobile. That's no longer in use. It's something called imaging edge, which you'll have to download from either your Google Play or App Store. And then you'll be prompted through a series of steps and a series of connections and waiting for certain things to cook up and connect, hitting OK. And when all is said and done and hooked up, you can control some basic functions of the camera like zooming. If you're in video mode or photo mode, you could take a shot. And then you could also download whatever pictures you have to your phone and view them that way. So yeah, definitely a camcorder offers some nice advantages over a mirrorless camera or DSLR. But this model, the AX53, is still from 2016 and is lagging a bit behind in some areas. So I feel I must talk to you about some of the disadvantages and some weaknesses of this camera. To use the surround sound feature, you have to be in AVC HD mode, which is the worst HD quality. Also, the voice canceling function doesn't really work too well. You're limited to 30 frames per second in 4K, so there's no 60 and no 120. Many high-end cameras now have more than one SD card slot for redundant recording. This only has one. It's a small sensor camera, so highlights are often going to be blown out. People have been complaining about the placement of the tripod mount. Since this camera was released, there's been many improvements in Sony's autofocus. This has the older system. And what's most annoying is the glare on the screen. It's almost impossible to see in direct sunlight. And since all the menus are controlled from there, it makes it very frustrating. But you do have a viewfinder. Hey, if you want to save $100 and you don't need a viewfinder, get the AX43A, the same camera without a viewfinder. There is an HDMI port, but it's of the micro kind, and it's been reviewed to be very delicate and breaks a lot. Hey, speaking of reviews, let's see what other people are saying about the camera. Hey, this guy has had three of them. Can't be that bad if he bought three, right? Let's read a couple more. I have used a lot of Sony products. They're of great quality, but this camera gives two different images with the same light. What are you, nuts? So the other guy bought three. This is this one's fourth. And you can see he talks about using it in a church. These cameras are very popular for church ceremonies, sports, anything long form because you're not subject to that recording limit. So, <laughs> crazy or genius? Well, do you know that most geniuses are a little crazy also? So the answer might be a little bit of both. 
But I think the true answer is that if your focus is video and you want something more than your cell phone, which is very limited, there's no viewfinder to look through in the bright sun, the zoom is limited, this has a 30 times zoom, a lot more professional controls, manual features, and it's not gonna break the bank like a mirrorless camera or DSLR would, then this is starting to look very reasonable in terms of price, convenience, it's real comfortable in the hand. You don't have to change any lenses. You go from wide to zoom with the same lens. Hell, the lens even opens up automatically. An incredible stabilization. I think you see where we're going here. Even though this camera is many years old, it's one of the last remaining camcorders in Sony's line. Yes, it only shoots 4K 30. It doesn't have all the wild and crazy Kodaks, but if all that is really not that important to you, if you realize a lot of that is just marketing hype and mumbo jumbo, and you wanna get down to basics and shoot really nice video, the AX53, there might be a reason it's still in Sony's line. And people will think you're really cool when you use your camcorder. I'm getting the camcorder. No, oh, don't no, get a please, camcorder. Oh, uh, well, maybe not. If you've gotten something out of this video, please hit like and do subscribe. More videos on the way. And I'll see you in the next one.